Ja Morant got hurt on this closeout, banging his knee at a high velocity into Klay Thompson. In terms of the infamous Jordan Poole moment, since I'm not a doctor, I'll leave it to a certified MD in Brian Sutterer to explain that. Number one, I don't care how good Jordan Poole is, his brain does not process quickly enough to make the transition from this point in the sequence where he initially is clearly going for the ball to then in a split second change his plan and physically think that, hey, I'm going to grab Morant's knee and I'm going to pull his knee with the intent of injuring him. Now there's no denying from the video here that certainly Poole does make contact with Morant's knee and it seems like Morant's knee does move outwards a little bit. But what we'll talk about is this is not nearly a high enough level of force to cause a significant injury to a ligament within the knee. Lost amidst the injury drama, the Warriors 22 year old phenom off the bench is averaging 26 points per game in the second round, which has sadly gone completely overlooked. When they're running insanely advanced offensive motion like this, the task of stopping not only Deadpool, but the deadliest three-point marksman ever in Stephen Curry becomes that much more of a problem. JP is continuing to develop into an absolute monster, and as fans across the association are starting to realize, that could very well lead to this storied franchise securing their seventh Larry O'Brien trophy. Before continuing, just 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Post game, John ja Morant tweeted and then deleted a post saying Jordan Poole broke the code, and head coach for the Grizzlies and Taylor Jenkins said that it was a dirty play. Various NBA players, including Golden State's own Gary Payton II, had their reaction to Memphis relating Poole's play to what Dylan Brooks or even Draymond Green did. Stephen Curry had the best response to all this nonsense, saying post-game, it's not a joking matter that Jaws hurt, but the rest of this conversation is BS, end quote. When you slow down anything, you can make it look bad, but as a certified doctor stated in the intro, there's simply no way Poole could have changed his intentions from swiping at the ball to intentionally injuring Morant that quickly. But moving on from all that internet manufactured BS, and we have to respect the dominant performance it was from the should have been most improved player of the year in Jordan Poole. From his matchups perspective, JP's willingness to attack, tight handle, quick first step with his long stride standing at six foot six inches tall makes him a nightmare to hold in front of off the dribble. The best part about Jordan's slashing is that he's capable of finishing with either finesse or explosiveness, of course with either hand. After going in the opposite direction of the screen, this slight Smitty dribble gets his matchup thinking jumper, giving Poole a clear lane to his offhand, then utilizing his 36 inch vertical jump to hang past Jones and watch how he has enough time to go back to his right on the opposite side. With Memphis down 18 early in the fourth, maybe somebody else should be matched up on JP other than the former Duke Blue Devil, Tyus Jones. To be fair, regardless of who Taylor Jenkins or any coach in the NBA places in front of him, these massive steps to get ahead of his matchup, purely gifted speed, and the ability to hold it with one hand even before beautifully transitioning and going up for a massive one-handed hammer from the real MIP is practically unstoppable. Somehow, I've gone around half this video without mentioning the scariest aspect in Deadpool's deep offensive bag, making 46% of his deep range shots. That makes Jordan one of three players next to Desmond Bain and Devin Booker shooting at least that efficient while attempting at least six triples per game in 2022's playoffs. Experiencing zero growing pains whatsoever, adjusting to the intensity of his first career postseason, the Bay Area's sixth man has been the perfect offensive Robin to Stephen Curry, surpassing Klay Thompson by averaging a team's second best 23 points per night on unheard of shooting splits of 56.5, 46.2, and 87.9. Unbelievable efficiency for a kid getting his first reps on the biggest stage of them all. The lights never get too bright for this poised product out of Michigan. We talked about Tyrese Maxey being a monumental robbery down at pick number 21 in 2020 for Philadelphia yesterday, but for the Warriors, how about the fact that 27 general managers said, 
I think I'll pass on Jordan Poole. As JP's star status increases, seemingly by the game, that many executives laying off this man becomes increasingly mind-boggling. It also speaks to the Warriors' first-class player development staff that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. The Warriors even picked up Jama Malalela, who helped my Raptors win a championship. He was added as a player development assistant this past summer. The Warriors are a first-class organization that continues to find and help round out gems one after the other. You probably missed it. I talked about the duo of Steph and Draymond a few days ago in this video, which is linked down below in the description. Go watch that after this. What I didn't heavily break down in that upload is how the young core of this team complements Curry and Green. Deadpool is not the only young weapon for the dubs, as another former G Leaguer in the 19-year-old rookie Jonathan Kaminga is finally getting his chance to shine in the playoffs without GP2 and is taking full advantage of the extra playing time from coach Steve Kerr. Putting himself in the same breath as one of the greatest scorers of all time, Johnny Buckets became the first teenager since Carmelo Anthony to score 18 plus points in a playoff game. As I predicted in the intro of the Curry and Green video a few days ago, both Kaminga, along with Automatic Porter Jr., have done an amazing job at filling in for Gary Payton on the wing. That forward one-two punch of Jonathan and Otto provides the perfect mix of youth and veteran poise. Kaminga and Porter Jr. are both big-time factors on the glass with their wingspan. Both are active, capable, and pesky defensive players, making that underrated dubs duo the perfect replacement for the young glove. Following up a patented drive and dish from Draymond right here, Kaminga shows off his standing jump and springiness, diagonally cutting over from the left wing. After catching the pass, this was a dominant finish to stop on a dime and pop up for a poster jam directly in Xavier Tillman's grill. Another green to Kaminga connection came on the fast break, Give credit to Dre for the nasty dime after pushing it like hell up the floor, but it's mostly Jonathan's gather and angling around Brandon Clark to then pop up for a dominant finish, which executes this transition opportunity. The footwork and hands Kaminga possesses for his 6'7 frame and 6'11 wingspan gives you flashes of Giannis Adetokounmpo. Taking into account the Warriors' personnel, with three bona fide future Hall of Famers in Steph, Dre, and Clay, another two players you can turn to in playoff Andrew Wiggins and the aforementioned third year sensation in Jordan Poole. Even if Kaminga becomes half the player that Giannis is, the kid's evolution would be considered a massive success. Which Warriors player deserves more respect in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st. Receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Thierry, who says, While this series can go either way, I think when both teams are at their best, Philadelphia is the better team. The 76ers will win in seven games, in my opinion. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.